Most people are undoubtedly familiar with this woman from several 1990s films. In the middle of the 1990s, Linda Fiorentino was a rising star and a significant sex icon. She won praise from critics for her performance as a femme fatal in the Neo Neuer movie The Last Seduction. After that, she became a household name thanks to the hit Men in Black. A few short years later, Fiorentino's career had cooled to the point that she was practically retired amid rumors of troublesome behavior. Today I would like to recall the short but bright career of the actress, and try to understand why her creative path ended. Fiorentino got her big break in 1985, opposite Matthew Modine in the coming-of-age drama Vision Quest. And just a few months later, Fiorentino starred opposite Anthony Edwards in the action comedy Gotcha. Both films were not hits, received average audience ratings, and made money at the box office. Starring in two movies would be a big debut year for any actress. But Fiorentino wasn't done yet. Later that year, she had a small but memorable supporting role in Martin Scorsese's dark comedy, After Hours. Fiorentino's role was small, but she got to work with Scorsese. Many actresses must wait for their whole career to work with a director of his caliber. The picture didn't make the big box office. The studio was able to get back the money spent on production. But like any Martin Scorsese film, it became famous after a while. And the actors who starred in his films became superstars and received statuettes. Although Linda did not receive any nominations, the actress noticed and began to call for minor roles in various films. And the first year, she capped off 1985 with an episode of the anthology TV show Alfred Hitchcock Presents titled The Night Caller. Fiorentino played a single girl who receives menacing phone calls. Working with two of the greatest directors gave Linda some popularity. After a jam-packed first year, Fiorentino's output slowed down. Her next film role was in Ellen Rudolph's Ode to 1920s Paris, The Moderns. Later that year, Fiorentino appeared opposite Stephen Bauer in Zalman King's drama Wildfire. Linda co-starred in the independent comedy Queen's Logic in 1991 with a talented cast. Kevin Bacon, Jamie Lee Curtis, John Malkovich, Joe Mantegna, and Tom Waits were all part of the cast. The movie Queen's Logic was originally shot in 1989, but it wasn't released theatrically in the US until two years later. After receiving negative reviews, it swiftly shuttered. In the early 90s, Linda began to get into expensive Hollywood projects despite the mediocre results of pictures. In 1993, she starred in Beyond the Law with Charlie Sheen in the title role. The film has a rather complicated fate. Based on true events, the picture cost $18 million was expected that the picture would be nominated for various awards. However, the film went straight to video due to various legal problems at the studio. But the audience liked the movie, even if recognition came later. In 1994, Fiorentina finally got noticed playing a sexy femme fatal in John Dahl's Neo Noir, The Last Seduction. Her character is a beautiful woman who convinces her husband, a doctor played by Bill Pullman, to sell cocaine. She then steals the money and leaves him high and dry in debt to drug dealers. Critics loved The Last Seduction and praised Fiorentino for her brave performance. She was nominated for numerous critics' awards and took home quite a few. One award she was not nominated for was an Oscar. The Last Seduction debuted on HBO before being released in theaters. As a result, she was not eligible for consideration. The Last Seduction was a small movie that scored Fiorentino buzzes. Even without an Oscar nomination, Fiorentino was suddenly one of the hottest rising stars in Hollywood. But things for the actress after the nominations, on the contrary, went bad. In 1995, with a loud bang failed drama directed by William Friedkin, Jade, Picture had a gigantic budget for such films $50 million. Now it's hard to understand what was in the minds of its creators at that time. Oscar-winning director William Friedkin was in charge of the process. William Friedkin, who once directed The French Connection and The Exorcist, the picture everyone in Hollywood expects great success. But Jade along with the movie Showgirls, hit the screens in the same year in 1995, putting an end to the trend for erotic thrillers. Its colossal budget picture was collected at theaters for only $9 million. Interestingly, the actress has refused to play a significant role several times, but she was bombarded with offers and money. Almost a third of the movie budget went to royalties for all the actors, plus $4 million to receive by screenwriter Joe Westerhaas, but he got it because he did not remove his name from the credits how he thought there was nothing left of his screenplay. 
and the movie had been turned into garbage. So as not to inflame the situation, the studio went to Esterhaus' scriptwriter, could have written on the posters from the creator of Basic Instinct. It didn't help the movie, but Esterhaus got a nomination for a Golden Raspberry and for Show Girls, in which he was also involved. In 1996, Fiorentino starred opposite Ray Liotta in John Dahl's follow-up to The Last Seduction, Unforgettable. There was a lot of anticipation to see Fiorentino reunited with Dahl. They were both hot properties following the success of their previous collaboration. But critics trashed Unforgettable calling it a mess. The $18 million movie only made 3 million in theaters in the United States. Unforgettable flops so badly in America that it was not released in the United Kingdom until two years later. Time was running out for Fiorentino to find a hit to capitalize on the success of The Last Seduction. She had a cameo role in the Bill Murray bomb, Larger Than Life. Then she appeared in the indie crime comedy, Kicked in the Head. Neither of these movies did much to advance her career. Thankfully, Fiorentino was cast in a hit movie in 1997. She appeared in Men in Black, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, alongside Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. The story goes that Fiorentino won her role during a poker game with director Sonnenfeld. Men in Black was a huge hit with critics and audiences alike. The $90 million film grossed an incredible $589 million. It went on to spawn two sequels and a cartoon. The first film ends with Fiorentino's character joining the team, which lead most people to assume that she would participate in any sequels. But when Men in Black the Second was released in 2002, Linda was not involved. Her character is written off in a single line of dialogue. Rumors have swirled about why Fiorentino did not return for Men in Black 2. Some claim that Fiorentino asked for an outrageous amount of money to reprise her role. Others have said that the entire cast and crew of the first film hated the actress and refused to work with her. Yet another rumor puts the blame on Tommy Lee Jones, who supposedly refused to return if Fiorentino was in the movie. Linda herself said she was unavailable, she would most likely have made room in her schedule for Man in Black the second, if she was offered a role assuming she wanted to do it. But by 2002, it's entirely possible Fiorentino didn't want to do another big Hollywood movie. She was more or less retired by then. As it turns out, Men in Black didn't open as many doors as you might have expected it to. In 1999, Fiorentino starred in Kevin Smith's religious satire, Dogma. The writer-director was arguably at the peak of his filmmaking career at the time. Using his indie cred and connections, he managed to assemble an all-star cast that Smith wrote the original script for Dogma before his breakout movie, Clerks. He rewrote the screenplay several times. The third draft of the script was leaked on the internet which angered the Catholic Church. Disney was reluctant to release the controversial film, so Harvey Weinstein bought the film back from Disney and released it himself. The film with a budget of $10 million was able to collect $31 million. Incidentally, Fiorentino is not in every scene in the movie. In fact her part was scaled down to make more room for bigger stars like Damon and Affleck, who were featured prominently in the film's marketing. In 2002, the actress hit her last big movie was a failed action movie Liberty Stand Still, in which together with her tried to revive his career Wesley Snipes. Liberty Stand Still premiered at the Palm Springs International Film Festival where it received mostly negative reviews. Snipes and Fiorentino were praised for their performances, but critics didn't care for the movie they were starring in. Liberty was intended to receive a theatrical release, but was released direct to video instead. Linda did not make another movie for seven years. Well, Fiorentino definitely stopped working. How much of that was personal choice, we'll never know. Maybe she had bad luck with the agent who developed her career or didn't know how to choose her roles. Aside from the critical acclaim from The Last Seduction and the overall success of Men in Black, her career never really gained all that much momentum. Even if she wasn't difficult to work with, it's likely her career would have cooled off anyway.